Now let's use the concept of the center of mass to see how to deal with these problems. One thing we want to remember that Newton's law has told us that the velocity of the center of mass is constant. It will not change before, during, or after the collision. And I can show you that with Hal and Al. So what we're going to do is we'll have Hal over here, Al over here, push them together, have them collide. And if we think about it, remember Hal weighs about three times more than Al. So the center of mass is going to be about right there, closer to the heavier mass. And it's going to kind of move. As they move together, it's going to kind of go to the right. So we will ram them into each other and see what happens. Let's see if it works out. So let's keep our eye on the center of mass. Here we go. So you can see center of mass did just what we said. It did not change its velocity. So if this is such an important quantity, I probably need to give you an expression to calculate it. It's, I'm not really going to derive it. I'll just give it to you the velocity of the COM, we would call it. Just like the position of the center of mass is sort of the mass average position, this is just the mass averaged velocity. In this case, it would be m1 times v1 naught plus m2 times v2 naught over the total mass, m1 plus m2. Now the idea that that center of mass continues uh, at a constant value throughout the collision isn't uh, the only thing you need. Let's, let me tell you a couple other things. Um, now we're going to think about being in the, the, the center of mass reference frame. Okay, So in the COM, the center of mass reference frame, Momentum is zero. The total momentum is zero. And, of course, it's also constant. So it's always zero. We could have just said it's always zero. But I like to write a lot of words as I go. All right. So let's think then. If that's always zero, what we want to do is start being able to calculate momenta in that reference frame. So we need to get our initial velocities in terms of what they would look like if you were in the reference frame of the center of mass. And that simply means if rather than standing still in the room, we actually moved with the center of mass. What would this look like? Let's think about it for a second. If we were here and they were coming together, but we were moving with them, it would look like they're just coming together. If you're in the center of mass frame, you just see two masses come together and hit. So the way to calculate those new velocities is like this, v one naught com. That's the complicated notation I'm going to use. v one naught and the center of mass. Some, a lot of books will use a prime or not a prime. I like to be real explicit when we get started. So v one naught in the center of mass frame is v one naught that you know and love minus v com, which is this, the center of mass velocity. So to convert something from the lab frame to the center of mass frame, you just subtract the velocity of the center of mass. And V2 naught in the center of mass frame is just V2 naught minus V C O M. And for all of these, we are using uh, the components. We are thinking if the velocity is this way, it's positive. If it's this way, it's negative. So you do have to keep up with the positive negative aspect. In this case, the center of mass velocity is positive. It's going that way because this one weighed more in, in our example. So you would subtract the positive velocity of the center of mass, or the positive speed of the center of mass. Um, let's see. So then, once we had that, we could conserve momentum and then go on and figure out what happens. But let's, instead of doing all the math, let's just sort of think about it for a second. If you are now in the center of mass frame, what would this collision look like? You're sitting here at the center of mass. And it's still, right? So that's what it means to be in the center of mass reference frame. And all you see is the two balls approach each other, m1, and it's going at v1 naught com. And 
and I'll draw it there. And you see the other ball approach, M2, and it, it's going at V2 naught C O M. And they hit each other. And as they're approaching, the momentum has to be zero. The total momentum in this frame is, is zero based on how we define the center of mass. So after they hit, the momentum has to be zero. Well, there's sort of three ways we could do that. Uh, one would be they miss each other and just keep going, and then their momentum wouldn't change. But that's not really a collision, and it's impossible, because it's in one dimension, and they have to hit each other. So that does, that's no good. Another could be they hit each other and stop, because then they had, there was momentum that was canceling to be zero, and then if they stop, then the momentum is zero, because they have no velocity. Well, that's no good, because this is an elastic collision. So we have to conserve energy. So if they just stop, we would lose a lot of kinetic energy. And you can't do that in an elastic collision. Very confusing in physics when we say an elastic. An elastic, not inelastic. That's always have trouble with that. So we can't have them pass each other. We can't have them stop. They must bounce back. Right? So in the center mass frame, even in our demo, they did bounce back. If you think about the center mass frame, not, not the lab frame. They bounce back. If we're going to conserve momentum, though, they could change their velocity. If they were to bounce back and both speed up by a factor of two, their momentum of each case would increase by a factor of two. Okay? And then they would still have cancel out, and you would still have a total momentum of zero. So conservation of momentum doesn't really require them to bounce back with their initial velocity, but conservation of energy does. Okay, so if they have to bounce back, and we have to conserve momentum, so all they can do is scale their velocities up and down. Well, they can't scale their velocities up and down. We have to have 1 half mv squared initial equals 1 half mv squared final. So what these two things mean together, conservation of momentum and conservation of energy, is that they bounce back with the same velocity they came in with. V1 final in the center of mass frame equals the negative of V1 initial naught in the center of mass frame. All right? And then V2 final in the center of mass frame is just the negative version of V2 initial in the center of mass frame. So all this complicated talking <laughs> was to get you to show you how easy the problem is if you do it in the center of mass frame. If you're given this problem, these two come together, what's going to happen? All you got to do is calculate the center. You don't even have to deal with mass as much. Right? You just plug into this equation, get the center of mass velocity, and then convert your velocity of each mass to a center mass frame. You stick negative signs on it, and you convert back. And that tells you how fast they go when it's all over. So it greatly simplifies these problems. You don't have to think about momentum and energy. It's really just sort of a mechanical thing that you do. I just wanted you to understand a little bit about where it comes from.